welcome to this lecture on uh, multi cycle cpu so uh, last week we discussed about the notion of single cycle cpu where uh, all the instructions were taking one cycle and uh, the definition of cycle was driven by the longest instruction right so this this is what uh, we we were discussing uh, few lectures before but if we uh, design a single cycle cpu it's actually violating the very first principle that that we started with uh, the amdahl's law right uh, which is making the common case fast so your common case is not every instruction will be the longest uh, we will demand the longest possible data path right uh, on average it may happen that some of the instructions are done with a, a small data path and then they, they will be done with a pretty small clock cycle time right so to to uh, mitigate the problem with the single cycle cpu uh, the, that we have been seeing so this is another way of uh, looking at the issues with the single cycle cpu so as you can see for the alu type of instruction we are actually not going to the memory the data memory we are going to the instruction memory to get the instruction but the data memory is not uh, utilized right but if you look at the clock cycle time it will be sum of all right so so this is kind of uh, a bad design right so for loads and store yeah you are using it but but uh, see the moment we are dealing with uh, like stores writing into memory right there you are not writing back anything into the register so this particular uh, event is actually uh, or this particular data path is actually not uh, required similarly for other instructions you will find that you may not need uh, the last three uh, data path that, that are used for alu memory and writing back into the register right so overall uh, this is kind of you know uh, trying to find out okay what exactly the worst case possible delay that any uh, instruction can go through and based on that we will define our clock cycle time so for obvious reason it's not practical so the notion of multi cycle is so instead of assuming that one instruction will take one cycle the the way we have seen right now we can assume one instruction can take multiple cycles and it can it can, it may not be a constant so depending on uh, alu loads register branch jump or whatever the number of cycles may be different right so how does it help well now the clock cycles are shorter if you look at compared to the big one right so for example if previously the clock cycle time was 8 nanosecond now for, for this particular uh, clock it will become 2 nanoseconds of 4 cycles right so this instruction is now taking 4 cycles and the cycle length is 2 nanoseconds instead of taking one one cycle which is of 8 nanoseconds right so with uh, multi cycle uh, what happens to our uh, cpi or ipc so uh, the example that i was giving so if you have a clock cycle of 2 nanosecond right that uh, kind of gives you a processor frequency of 500 megahertz previously if you remember uh, sorry previously if you remember uh, we had uh, 8 nanosecond uh, clock cycle which is kind of pretty low in terms of uh, the frequency, right? Which is kind of uh, four times uh, lower than this particular value, right? So with this, what we are getting is we are getting cycle per instruction four, right? So we have improved our processor frequency. We are kind of using a better or faster processor now because the clock cycle time has improved. But now the cycles per instruction has uh, gone down, right? Which means for once instruction you are spending four cycles but but in the previous case in the single cycle cpu the cpi or ipc used to be one right you are uh, executing one cycle uh, one instruction per cycle so so this is a trade off now so in the single cycle cpu your clock cycle was pretty slow okay with multi cycle your clock cycle is faster but your cpi is low okay so 
if if we try to uh, correlate with this notion of single cycle and multi cycle with uh, the current uh, covid-19 vaccine schedule you can assume that uh, the schedule designed through single cycle is assuming everyone will take around 1 hour to get the vaccine right you go for, go there you know uh, make sure all the uh, verification and everything is done so the multiple rounds of verification then you take the vaccine and then after that you wait for half an hour to just to make sure there is no side effect right so that's kind of the worst case 60 minutes schedule right so multi cycle what you can assume is no i don't need 60 minutes instead i i will need multiple 15 minute slots right so first 15 minutes maybe for verification one second for verification two and blah 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 so this is kind of a average case uh, schedule where, where we, we try to make sure that okay not everyone is waiting for one hour and uh, on average we'll be able to uh, you know schedule things at a 50 15 minute uh, interval so it, what we can do at this moment is we, we can try to uh, find out a, a hybrid approach which can provide both cycle per instruction one along with uh, faster clock rate right so uh, multi-cycle cpu provide faster clock rate right like we move from let's say 125 megahertz to 500 megahertz when when the clock cycle moved from 8 nanosecond to 2 nanosecond but but the cpi goes down it goes down from one to four right so can we get the best of both the worlds like 500 megahertz processor or, or clock cycle time of two nanosecond along with cpi of one okay and that's where uh, the instruction pipelining uh, will come into picture that we will discuss in the next video with that thank you